Hey there, good looking. Welcome back. Great news. It's whale week. Hey there, friends. Welcome to my channel. My name's TK, and around here we just like to talk about ways that we might be able to live our life with more intention. Um, and I'm coming to you from outside today, even though we're staying inside and staying safe these days. This is my balcony. Typically today I would actually be on the Oregon coast volunteering with the Oregon State Parks Department as part of their whale watching here program. And since that is shut down today due to coronavirus containment efforts, I thought this is a great opportunity to tell you a little bit more about these amazing mammals and how they have been able to sustain themselves for 50 years million years. Whale watching spoken here has been around since the 70s and it staffs volunteers like myself and currently 300 other individuals along the Oregon and Washington coasts to help inform citizens about the gray whale migration. This is specifically Eastern Pacific gray whales and they feed in the waters of Alaska and the Bering and Chukchi seas and then they migrate 6,000 miles south to the Baja lagoons in Mexico where they breed and calf and then in the springtime which is right now they are making their northern migration back up to get some food. They have not eaten since they left in like October or November and they're pretty hungry. So it is the job of the volunteers to count both whale sightings and residents informed to see how involved the public is in this type of program. I have personally been a whale nerd since um, a very young age. It started out with dolphins, evolved to belugas, and has since grown to encompass all cetaceans. All whales are mammals, which means that they are air breathing and give birth to live young, but they spend their entire lives in the ocean. They are categorized into two orders, which are baleen and toothed whales. Baleen whales include gray whales, which means they have baleen, which is different than teeth like you and I have. Baleen is made from long bristle-like material similar to human fingernails that whales use to filter their food. Toothed whales have teeth a lot like you and me, and they eat larger fish um, and other sea mammals sometimes uh, and they chew regularly <laughs> instead of filtering their food out. We'll talk a little bit more about how baleen whales eat in a little bit but that is an important distinction to make. One of the things that draws me to whales is the fact that these are some of the biggest creatures on the planet and the really big ones like blues, humpbacks, and grays sustain themselves on some of the smallest organisms. We're talking about zoo and phytoplankton. I feel like whales are megafauna with like the mission of do no harm, which I try my best to model my life after. And I'm just so inspired by how they've come to sustain themselves and interact with their environment for millions of years. And in the new strange world of COVID-19 and coronavirus containment, I have spent a lot of time self-soothing with whale videos. Uh, and my efforts today are simply to help you learn a little bit more about the gray whales specifically and inspire you to learn a little bit more about your favorite animals because it can bring you so much joy and comfort. So back to the gray whale. After gray whales have spent the summer feeding in Alaska and they are actually the only known baleen whale to bottom feed exclusively which means they'll flip on their side skim the ocean floor suck up a bunch of mud and gunk and use their tongue to expel anything that isn't food they'll trap the stuff they do want to eat in their baleen and then lick it up and they have to do this for almost 20 hours a day because they only eat in the summertime. As soon as they leave for Mexico in about October or November, they fast and they are living exclusively off their fat reserves. And this includes new moms. So during their migration, it's crucial that they swim as efficiently as possible. And scientists think that their surfacing patterns, which are a short surface, shallow dive surface to exhale and inhale again and then a deep sounding dive about 300 to 500 meters is the most efficient way for them to swim so you are most likely to see their dorsal ridge or their back or their tail which is technically called a fluke but what you were like to notice before either of those is their blow or their exhale because when they surface to let out a breath it spouts water six to eight 
feet in the air and they swim about three to five miles off the coast. They try to hug the shoreline to stay away from predators as much as possible, especially on the northern migration that is happening now um, and will continue to happen through June. And towards the tail end of that, mothers with their new calves will be heading back to Alaska. Even three miles off the coast, the blow, um, which is e most easily seen on a calm day, will look like a pinprick in the water and it'll be just like a line of line of white and if it's super windy it might blow away pretty quickly so you have to have patience and preferably a pair of binoculars to catch these guys. I have personally been at locations that have had over 30 sightings in a three hour period though and it's freaking phenomenal and incredibly humbling. Occasionally you might find them playing though too and they have other behaviors like spy hopping or breaches uh, and that's where the whale jumps out of the water and smashes back down. Now just because I saw 30 in a three hour period doesn't mean that they were all traveling together. Great whales are actually solitary whales. They don't have pods like some other tooth whales do. If you see them traveling close together, that's usually because it's kind of like our highways, right? We might be traveling with a car next to us for miles on end, but it's not because we're going together. It's because we have a similar destination. One of the most notable characteristics of a gray whale is actually their coloring. So they do have a gray color, hence their name, but they are almost entirely spotted from barnacles that will attach themselves from a very young age. Grays are slow swimmers and they attacked a lot of parasites. But these barnacles aren't really parasitic in the way that we would think and they actually keep the sea lice from living directly on the whale to living on the barnacles. But they do leave the whales with kind of a Dalmatian-like spot pattern, and I think it is like kind of beautiful. <laughs> so researchers estimate that gray whales need to eat up to like 7% of their body weight, which for males ranges between 17 and 30 tons, and for a mature female could be up to 35 tons. And to put that in perspective, it takes 100 pounds of phytoplankton to make one pound of gray whale. So it's no wonder they spend most of their summers eating as much as they possibly can, especially for nursing females that could be nursing for up to the next eight months. The gray whale gestation period is 12 months long. So a female could be impregnated anytime between December and April, make the northern and then southern migration, and then will stay in Baja until they have calved. And usually about two months later, their baby will be strong enough to head north again. And then it takes about another five to 11 years for a juvenile whale to be ready to reproduce themselves. I hope you found some of this interesting. I know it is so exciting for me to talk to people about these magnificent animals. I've had the joy of watching like 80 year olds to five year olds see their first spout and like realize, oh my gosh, there are huge things out there that are reliably just passing by that if you don't take the time to notice them, you would totally miss it. If you cannot wait until you can get out to the coast to see them for yourself, um, the Oregon State Parks Department does have a live stream whale cam and you better believe it's gonna be on at my house this week. Gray whales are very well known for being super curious and interactive. And like back in the day when whaling was still a huge threat to their population, they were known as the devil fish because they are are very protective of their young and they are not messing around if you're throwing harpoons at them. Another reason to love and appreciate these sweet animals. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. I really want to know in the comments below what your favorite animal is and why. I would love to learn a little bit more about more species. Or if you have a specific whale question that I did not cover, specific to gray whales, or I can look up another species for you, please start a dialogue. I don't got a lot going on these days. We're just hanging out at home. I hope you are too. Please stay safe, wash those hands, and come back next week for more ways that I'm trying to live my life with more intention. Oh my gosh, this bird is like talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Do you like the whales? This is really awesome, but not the right time. <laughs>